I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Sitting here with Joni at the Kansas City Zoo. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. So, what all do we have behind us? Well, we have quite a variety out here on our, this is what we call our plains exhibit. So, the majority of them are the scimitar horned oryx. But the big ones here are eland. Along the back fence, we have some lesser kudu. And there's a springbok back with them. And then we have some addicts over here. And one of the addicts is having an identity crisis and trying to challenge one of the He horses. is. He's a youngster, so he's kind of feeling his oats, I think. Yeah, and even if he does win, it's not going to win him anything. <laughs> That's true. It's completely different species. That's true. So we're here to talk about the scimitar or horned oryx. Mm -hmm. So where can you find them at? Where can you find them at? They're around the Sahara, so over in Africa, in the northern part of Africa. They, they don't exist exactly in the desert, but around the perimeter. And they're very endangered, as I hope uh, all my viewers know. They're actually considered extinct in the wild. They were declared that wow. in, by the IUCN, which is International... Uh, Union for the Conservation of Nature. They were declared extinct in the wild in, in the year 2000. I remember when I was at the National Zoo's kind of research and breeding center in Front Row, Virginia. I went to this Eco Bio Geo Camp, or as my family called it, Eco Bio Nerd Camp. <laughs> and I got to learn about the scimitar horned orcs there because I didn't know about them previously. And I, thought, I thought the conservation uh, story, like now that I'm learning about it, is really neat and kind of interesting. It is. Not a whole lot of people know about them. It's an awesome story and actually as our zoo here has participated it's even more special to us. Um, so some of the European zoo, zoos started doing reintroduction programs back in the 80s and in the 90s and the US, the North American zoos got involved actually in the um, 2007 was the first time and we sent two animals that were born here over to San Diego which was kind of the staging area for them and out of that they picked a group that went to Tunisia they were doing reintroductions in Tunisia and so one animal that was born here was actually selected and ended up in Tunisia. So That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool and then they have expanded since then and now because the success in Tunisia they've expanded to Chad and that's been the country that they're working in now oh, to reintroduce so oryx and it was actually the last stronghold where they saw the last wild oryx was in Chad in a game reserve there so they're working to reestablish them there and we have a we had sent a female out who had an offspring in another right. institution, and that offspring was also one that was selected to go over this time to Chad. And I don't know if it actually went, if it was part of the cut that went to Chad over. or not, but they've done reintroductions in Chad now. They've done four reintroductions, and the latest one was actually just in February. So I don't know if you know the exact number, but uh, how many horde orcs have been from here that have been part of the program where I've gone? back to Africa. Two that were here on okay. grounds and then the one that we owned that we donated for the program. And also do you know if there's any like, success in that? Do you know if they're breeding again out there? They are. Actually okay. the, the reintroductions, that they, the Chad is actually the first time they've actually put them into the wild. They didn't work in fence pens and they introduced um, what they call founders which are adults and then there were some pen born calves that were introduced and some that were born in the wild that are there also. So I think I never checked back in to see if like they were actually breeding out there. Yeah, they are. They, so that's good to hear. They found some breeding. So yeah, it's very exciting. So what kind of food uh, and plants do these animals eat out in the wild? These guys are grazers. I mean, you can see we don't have a lot of vegetation here because they eat it down pretty, pretty much. Um, so they're grazers, and they'll they'll browse a little bit on tree limbs and stuff, but they're more of the grass eaters. And then obviously they're doing the same here. They're grazing. They do the same thing All here. of the grass that you have here. Yes, for they them. do. <laughs> So how does your agricultural department like them eating all of their plants? <laughs> well, we just kind of do what we can to it and uh, we feed them hay and grain to supplement that. Okay. So when they come back in the barn at nights, they get a lot of hay. And this isn't their only exhibit, right? You mentioned that you have some orcs that's in with the giraffes as well. Yeah, but usually we keep the males separated unless we're doing breeding. So we've got the males usually run with the giraffe. What is one of your favorite things about the scimitar horned oryx? Well, the neat thing is they're, they're a herd animal, and it's just a different mentality from a lot of different species. Um, but when you see them moving, it's pretty much they all move together. So it's, it's a herd mentality, and they'll defend the herd. And they're kind of, kind of like wary when we're coming over here. Except for that addict, kind of yeah. talking loud. <laughs> Except for him. <laughs> we're kind of talking loud and everything. They're looking at us all weird, but they're fine now. They are, yeah. They're, they're used to people being around because they're, they're on a 17-acre exhibit, so... 
they're used to people seeing them from all angles. So, I haven't mentioned it so far in the video, but it's probably the most dominant uh, and most well-known feature about the scimitar board oryx is its horns. Right. So what are those used for and like, how does it help them? Oh, they're used for defense. They're, they're, they'll show you their aggression. They'll start rubbing the, the horns on the ground and they can turn their heads around. Um, if something was to jump on them from the back, they, they're right there and they, they, they know how to move their heads so that they can use those horns for defense. And that's actually how they get their name. Is a scimitar is a type of sword that kind of looks curved like that. So that's why their name is scimitar horned oryx. And they have a quite unique pattern, like with the brown in the front and then the white. How does that help them? Um, where they are, it's probably pretty sunny, and so that probably helps with camouflage. So as you know, when you're looking into the sun, you, the colors kind of blend together and you can't really see the colors, so the different coloration probably helps them blend in with the, the areas that they're in. And then along with the kind of camouflage, what other adaptations do they have to survive near the desert? One of the neat things about them is, I mentioned that they were grazers. Um, if they're on fresh green grass, they can go for months without actually drinking wow, water. Really? They get all their water just from the plants. That's pretty, like, off of grass and plants, it's kind right. of impressive. And then when there's not water, then they, they start the migration, and that's when you'll see big herds of them migrating to find a water source. Well, that was really cool to hear because uh, I didn't know about that previously yeah. as well. But thank you so much for telling us about the scimitar horde oryx. Oh, no problem. And a very uh, cool animal to me since I learned about it a lot of years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. And as always, I'll see you next week.